Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Sports Federation TV where we talk about sport, we talk about how sport is played, we talk about passion on and off the field. We've got an exciting show. The first bit that we did this morning, uh, we went out to Sports Science Institute. We took this location out to where things happen. We'll see what that's all about. We'll catch up with uh, the legendary Lance Isaacs, chat to him about his career. And we'll also catch up with some squash that we've, that's happening currently this weekend. Right now, let's see what Ricardo Salia and his colleague Chad had to say at the Max Steel Maestros program. Let's have a look. Welcome, Ricardo. Hi. Hi. Chad, how's it? Hi, thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah. What's uh, Max Steel Maestros all about? Um, Max Steel Maestros is about um, uplifting um, underprivileged, um, talented um, youth in. in in the country. Um, what we do is we focus on athletes that have reached the, uh, the, the top um, five in, the, in a particular sport, um, whether it be a team sport, whether it be individual sport. Um, we look at those kind of athletes and we try and give them the expertise um, from the Sports Science Institute um, to take them to the next level. Um, it is a sponsored program from Max Steel, the company itself. It's uh, the name Max Steel Maestros. It's the name Max Steel Maestros. Um, and basically um, what we do is we try and get a background of the athlete um, from the federation. And um, from there we try and see what the, the needs are from the, from, from the athlete itself. And um, from there we put them into a program. And, and the main thing is we create an environment where the athlete can actually reach their potential. Um, we cannot predict um, performance. Um, but what we can do is we can create an environment where an athlete can be successful. Um, and again, of course, that term successful is determined by the athlete itself. And their commitment and, and, all, and the, all, all the other aspects that go with it. And all the aspects that goes with it. Um, one, one of the key things that we, we, we focus on in the program, um, we have a three-pillar approach. Um, one, it is education. Two, it is the athlete itself in terms of life. Um, and then the life skills issue. Um, and those are the three pillars that we we, we focus on in terms of, of the program itself. Um, again, performance is driven by the, by the athlete. Um, and we believe that um, sport um, itself cannot provide for athletes um, in the country. And, and therefore, the athletes have to have some form of education. And, and of course, coming with education is the life skills. Um, because again, um, out of competition is where we feel the athletes are mostly pressured. Um, dealing with conflict, dealing with time management issues, dealing with um, self-esteem, goal setting. So those are the kind of things that we try and develop um, with athletes, just not performance. So it's, a, it's, it's basically an holistic approach rather than just, I'm the coach, let's make this happen, let's do it now. It's what happens off the field, effectively? Yeah, um, it's, it's everything basically off the field. Um, and like I said, we, we, we lack enough to, to, to be housed here at the Sports Science Institute because it's a, it's a natural fit for the program. Um, the institute itself has been built um, on the premises of um, different services. Um, so there's psychology, dietitians, um, physiotherapists, biokineticists, high performance biokineticists, rehabilitation biokineticists. So um, there's quite a bit of, of, of expertise in the building. Um, and that's what makes the, 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 the program so special um, because an athlete can walk in um, at 9 o'clock and, and walk out at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and see every single specialist. Um, and, and gotten some advice on how to improve. So, so it's been a natural fit for, for, um, for the sports science and to be housed here at the sports science. Um, so, so that's what we try and do. We try and create that environment for an athlete. Sounds interesting. Chad, what's your involvement in all of this? Well, I'm new to the program, so, um, you know, it's about kind of taking the program from, you know, the point it got to right now all the work that was put in by Ricardo and his team, I've kind of come in with a, almost a third person approach to just uh, see how much value I can add based on the experience that I've gained. I've just had a stint overseas, just kind of, um, you know, touching on, you know, what the market industry is all about there, because obviously, yes, they have 300 million people in the, in the US, but there's a lot we can learn from the way things are done there. Very good structures. Um, you know, we have endless debates about whether the socioeconomic dynamic can be applied to our country but there's a lot that we can you know we can take from that and then take the best of you know some of the experiences that I've had and, and come and apply it 
you know, back within this particular context. So. Yeah, I, having said that, do you think, I mean, you've now come from overseas pretty recently. How do we compare, I mean, this facility at Sports Science, how does it compare to in, any facility in the States? I think we're right up there, to be honest. Um, there, there may be some negative perceptions because of the outcomes at international competition. You know, when we, we look at the medal tallies, for, for example, you guys are like, wow, no, these guys are, don't know what they're doing. From a scientific perspective, we, we're right up there. Um, the difference is that the, the structure where, you know, in terms of the, the process flow or the path in which an athlete has to follow from a very young age over there is a very different, you know, situation altogether. A lot of funding obviously available and uh, the kid's exposed to a lot more at an earlier age. Yeah. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox Synergy 2.2 kilogram whey protein for only 459.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 for only 179.95 or the Evox Creatine HCL now only 209.95. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westerberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego, from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration, and number plates. Only at Tata Westerberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010, and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. So maybe you can give us an example of, of, of that path, just so we can understand. I mean, Rick and I are born and bred Cape Townians, and we've been through the Cape Townian system, yes. South African system. Yes. You've been exposed to the American system. Tell us, and, and then we can try and look and see what's the difference and how we can improve yes. so we can also get medals, more medals in 2016. Uh, 2016 may be a bit short, but maybe 2020, because now we can yes. start with the next generation and build them up coming through, through the Maxfield program. I think primarily... One of, the, one of the major strengths is they have phases in which a kid is allowed to just be exposed to playing a sport where it's not so much about you know, specialized training too early. Exposing the athlete to as, you know, as many different either sports or kind of functional movement patterns or you know, allow the child to just enjoy themselves at a participation level more so than a competitive level. But the crossover happens when a kid goes to elementary school or primary school and uh, you know they, they don't necessarily specialize, but it becomes a very professional environment at a very early age. Okay. So a kid will, you know, get exposed to proper coaching, exposed to, um, you know, their curriculum is based on having physical activity as a part of the, you know, the schooling system, almost on a daily basis. Whereas we may have, you know, even at our highest level, um, I'm talking of you know amateur sport. Uh, guys may be working out twice, three times a week and ex being expected to excel. Yeah. Whereas these kids, it becomes a norm for them. Mm -hmm. So when it gets to a point where a kid has to really make a, you know, a informed decision about what their career path is going to be in terms of uh, you know, athletic performance, their collegiate system is you know, right up there where you don't have this gap between high school and professional sport. So... A lot of kids, I mean, I'll use the example of LeBron James. I mean, it's, it's probably a, you know, quite an out there example because he was a, he's a unique phenomenon. But he was a, obviously a number one draft pick out of high school. And he went straight to the pros. So if you're looking at that kind of level of competition and athletic development, I mean, that's uncanny. I mean, are we ever going to talk about an athlete going from you know, being you know, a senior in high school to be you know, a household name? Um, and it happens a lot in this sport because of the draft system as well. They will have... Uh, you know, kids identified at a very early age and almost path will be laid out for them from high school into a collegiate system. They have four years within a collegiate program where you treat it as a professional. So by the time they get to that crossover, whether it be international competition, Olympic Games, World Championships, or your professional career as a sports person on a, on a you know, full-time contract, they're so geared towards that um, that you know, it's almost chalk and cheese in, in terms of an opportunity when you take an athlete from an environment like, say, the South African environment versus a, you know, overseas environment. So it's, it's a lot about exposure. Yeah, and, and I think, Ricky, 
the problem for me with that is when, when an athlete finishes high school and they go to university here in South Africa, sport is virtually non not, not non existent, but it's it's not a focus. So if you have what happens to a kid who comes out comes through this program and finishes high school? In your case, what happens to that kid after that? Um, like I said, we, we encourage the, the educational side of things. So so generally, the kids that are on, on the Master Masters program have to plan for an educational system after um, after high school. Um, and most of the, the, the kids do go into uh, a university, college. Um, but they're not, they're still under your control or, or, that's, or that's still part of the program or do they the, exit the, the program? Um, they, they, they're still part of the program. Um, the program allows a, a, an athlete to be on the program for about three years. Um, we've also got an age gap in terms of where we say between 13 and 18. Um, that's what our program can allow. Um, and we say in the three years they should have gotten the expertise. Um, of course, if we sign a 13-year-old, um, we, we say by, by 16, that they'd still be in high school. Mm. We'd still look after the athlete um, in that regard. When they reach um, 18, 19, 20, and then the university system, we still look after them, but more on an adult basis. Because um, again, we've given them the tools to, to, to survive. Again, the assumption is that the universities will look after them as well. Um, but like you say, in the university structures, um, sport is not the, the, the priority, let's say that. And, and therefore, um, the, the, the college sports or the university sports in the country is not that great. Um, and often that is the biggest battle because um, when you play for university, um, you have to make the decision is it university sport or club sport. Um, and kind of club sport in, in, in the country is much, much stronger than what it is in university sport. So that's the biggest dilemma um, that I think uh, we face where in the States, um, college sport is just as big as professional sport. Absolutely. Um, and, and so uh, you have a choice as, a, as, a, as an athlete. Um, whether do I, I can go to professional sports and earn lots of money possibly, or I can go to a college system, um, get an education and still play at the high level and then still make it as a professional. Yeah. Um, so so in our context, um, in South Africa, that's what we, we, we always drive in education. So so when they get into that system, we almost saying a different pathway. So now we start talking and that's where we come in and, and, and Chad will be, be doing quite a bit of that is the mentoring process of of, of Max Steel is now, how much are you going to be committing to your sport and how much are you committing to your education? Um, again, because um, there's a couple of sports that, that you can earn quite a bit of money in this country um, and most of our sports are not professional. I mean, meaning that there's, there's, there's no funding, there's no money available and often these are the athletes that, that are actually professional um, that spend hours and hours training with almost no reward, but they make it to the Olympic Games. Um, so it, it is kind of a very difficult situation for our current athletes, um, where finances is not that great, but yet they put in the hard work. Um, the Master Masters program, the institute is always available, um, and, and the services will always be there for athletes and that want to strive for it. So um, I, I'd always say that, that we, we, we have to start with, um, athletes must plan. Stop planning the future. Um, it's not not always by chance that you make it. Mm. It's the preparation, the planning, and um, through that they can they, they can become top top five in the in, the, in the sport and and give um, give Chad a headache and, and, <laughs> and um, a good headache a good headache. <laughs> where he has to he has to, to struggle to pick up. Yeah. I mean I think that is that is ultimately where we want to be mm. um, and. And, and our, our main goal, of course, is to, to, to provide athletes um, further on. I mean, we just want to give them an opportunity. And um, from there, the federations and SASCOC and, and, and all that, they take over. And they then provide the next phases for these athletes. Because, um, and I think that's the national process that we want to create for the athletes. Chair, Ricardo, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for the information. Thank you. What a pleasure. Guys, as you can see, there's lots of opportunities within South Africa, within culture sport, to grow your sport. And without these kinds of opportunities, you need to step up to the plate, put out your, your hand and say, I'm ready, I want to do it. But you can only do it with preparation, as Ricardo said. Make contact with Max Steel Maestros, see if you can get on the program. It'd be well worth your while. See you now. That was uh, Ricardo and Chad chatting about what they've done, what their plans are for 
for the maestros and, and how we can get involved. Let's take a short break and when we come back, we'll chat more. See you now. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox Synergy 2.2 kilogram whey protein for only 459.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 for only 179.95 or the Evox Creatine HCL now only 209.95. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westerberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego, from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration, and number plates. Only at Tata Westerberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010, and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Welcome back. We had a, a fun fold week. We went out to UCT earlier this week and we caught up with Karin Schultz, who was the coordinator of the Jarvis Cup. Let's have a look and see what that was all about. See you now. Okay, uh, my name is Karin Schultz. I'm part of the West Brom Squash Organising Committee for the Jarvis Cup and Cup. Um, I'm a player as well as the one of the main organisers in terms of the tournament. Uh, Laser Jarvis Kaplan Cup is a tournament that's been running since 1960. It's a team tournament. It's our squash interprovincial tournament. It takes place in, in July of every year. It's our premier event of the year. It involves about 250 players from across the country, 11 provinces, and quite a few uh, international players that have actually arrived on the scene in the last few years to spearhead some of the province sides for their titles. This tournament has got quite a, a great history and it's got a really um, exciting and fun atmosphere and a lot of the internationals have heard about the tournament through the world's uh, WSA and PSA World Squash Tours. Um, the internationals have heard that it's a well-run run tournament. The squash is of the, of the highest caliber. Um, it's a team tournament which has got an electrifying atmosphere that you can't describe. You have to be here to see it. Um, the squash by the internationals coming here just increases the uh, standard. It gives the South African squash community a chance to see top international players on home soil. So it's a brilliant, brilliant tournament. The internationals would normally um, be invited by the various provinces to uh, compete. Each province is, is allowed by the rules of Jarvis Captain to have one international per province for men and one per, per um, female uh, section in the A sections. So what has been happening is that we're finding that if you haven't got an international in the A section in the men and the women's teams, you sadly aren't able to compete um, with the level. So we now pretty much have on most of our sides both A, men and women's, and international competing. The internationals do get um, a pay that's normally, that, sorry. Internationals do get paid. Uh, that's normally disclosed uh, and agreed by the various provinces privately. Um, a lot of our, some of our internationals actually actually come at their own expense sometimes to play because of the reputation of the tournament and they really want to compete. So there's a, sometimes a bit of a competition between some of the internationals to play for the various provinces. So the tournament is normally held in July of every year and it rotates um, every year. Um, last year was in Port Elizabeth. Uh, this year obviously Cape Town and next year it moves to Poch and I believe it's the first time they will be having it in Poch so it rotates um, annually. Um, the best thing about the tournament is that we've got people that we know very well that we've had a history with or uh, we've known since we were much younger it's a, it's, a, it's a great tournament we all want to be here and um, you want to put on a really good event for people who are now your lifelong friends really. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox Synergy 2.2 kilogram whey protein for only 459.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 for only 179.95 or the Evox Creatine HCL now only 209.95. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. 
Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westerberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego, from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration, and number plates. Only at Tata Westenberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010, and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Welcome back to Sports Federation TV where we talk about sport, we talk about our sport display, we talk about passion. Someone that's very passionate about motor, motor car, motor bike and motor car racing is the legendary Mr. Lance Isaacs. Good evening, welcome. Good evening. Nice. Uh, thanks for having me here. I'm honored to be with the man because that's what you are. Everybody talks, you talk motorbike, all they talk about is Lance. Tell us who is Lance, firstly. Well, um, I'm a small little boy. <laughs> Not such a little boy anymore. Uh, tender age of 36 years old. Um, my career basically started off at a very young age. Um, well, not career. But my dad uh, c coming home with a motorbike when I was three years old. Could actually ride a motorbike before I, could, before I learned to ride a, a BMX bicycle. <laughs> so uh, I think it was written in the stars, and uh, my dad had a had a very clear plan as to as to what he uh, what he wanted me to do or or um, where he, that where, he, where he perceived me to be uh, yeah. in, in future. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been, a, been a very long road. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a family passion. My dad, his brothers, my grandfather, great-grandfather, they've always had, uh, I, I would say, high octane running through their, brain, uh, their, their veins. And, um, you know, naturally, uh, I was steered in that path, and, uh, and it's a path that I've, I've continued uh, throughout my life. Uh, fortunate enough to make my sport my career, um, which is uh, which is great. And um, you know, I started off uh, uh, with my motorbike at three years old. From there, um, you know, it was it was pretty much grassroots levels of, of two wheeled sport for me. Uh, going to race BMX, uh, I grew up. I was born and raised in uh, in, the, in the KwaZulu Natal, uh, Peter Maritzburg, uh, predominantly um, racing in the uh, BMX championships uh, around the country, was a South African BMX champion at the age of 10 years old. Okay, so you raced at the Golden Circle and all of those places? All over. We, we used to travel to Cape Town, raced, uh, I, think it, I think it used to be the... Crayfontein. Back in the day, it used to be called the Western Flyer, uh, Western Flyer BMX Circuit. I think it was sponsored by, by Western Correct. Flyer. I think it was in Goodwood, I think it was. There was one in Goodwood, there was one in Crayfontein, and one on the West Coast. Yes, yes. Well, we predominantly, well, for our national events, we mm. predominantly raced at, uh, at Goodwood, I think mm. it was. Um, yeah, and it was been great. Uh, traveled, I've traveled at a very, from a very young age. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it's been a natural progression for, for me. Uh, from BMX days, ended up uh, going over to race motocross. And um, yeah, race, racing motocross back in the, back in those days was was really it was really fun, really rewarding. Was was it was absolutely massive uh, back in the day. It's not it's not I don't want to it's it's evolved quite a lot uh, to date. Um, and uh, it was it, between my dad and I, we were at a crossroads. We we didn't know which we, we were trying to decide in which route to to follow. And um, I, I was always really keen on, on uh, road racing, and uh, Kevin Schwantz was one of my one of my heroes. So uh, we thought, you know, we'd try something different. And yeah, from from then, road racing has just kicked off pretty much. So, so what age did you did you, did you migrate from from motocross into onto track? Yeah, I, the motocross the motocross thing stopped kind of stopped for me at, at age uh, age fourteen. Um, and we, we, we took a we took a little bit of a break from from racing. We had some we had some family family issues uh, with the passing of my mom, and uh, you know we just we just took a break from from a few things. And uh, when we got fired back up again, we just decided you know what road racing is a natural progression. Um, Sixteen years old, decided you know that was it. Uh, road racing road racing was it, and and the bug bit ever since. And, and, and I mean, what was it like going from from BMX motocross into 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 road riding, and 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 the handling aspect because I, I'm 
But my, what you're saying is that that's where it all started. Yeah. Is if you didn't do the BMX, you wouldn't be confident enough to to move to progress. Yeah. Well, you know, like it is, like you say, you know, you when you're starting at the when you're starting at those grassroots levels, you know, riding riding BMX, there's certain skills you learn on mm -hmm. a BMX that will translate over into riding a um, a motocross bike. Uh, little technical skills, uh, maneuvering, et cetera, et cetera. And naturally, riding an off-road bike when, you, when you're when learning to slide and, and, and to learning to, to look for traction on an, an off-road circuit um, translates over into when you're riding a, a road bike because, you know, with tire degradation, when the, when the tires start going off, start sliding around pretty much just like the motocross bikes uh, start sliding around, which is... You know, I still do off-road ri off riding as, uh, as, as, tr as training to date. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the one hand always washes the other. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Just on that, a quick question. People only use a tire once on a track. Is, yeah. that, is that the true story? Yes. Why? Because a, tra a tire thread? Well, we, you know, uh, if you think about uh, the, the pace that, we, that we're actually riding at, um, from, from when the tire is new, um, we're pushing everything to the maximum. The suspension has been pushed to the maximum. The, 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 the bike's performance has been pushed to the maximum. So the acceleration from the motorcycle, the rear wheel, the grip that you have in the beginning of a race is never the, the same as the grip that you have at the end of the race. And that's what our practice sessions are all about. You know, we, we're trying to find the perfect balance of, on, the, on the motorcycle from start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes sometimes the the conditions change some circuits are, are more um are more abrasive than other circuits so so that's why the, the practice sessions are, are so vital and the qualifying sessions are so vital to to getting the perfect setup for your bike sometimes you you just miss it completely and you and you have a bad weekend other times you've hit the sweet spot and you can run away with races yeah and, and i mean that's interesting for me is, is, is the fact that you people take practice sessions for granted that it's just you out having a jolly win actually it's it's more hard work than actually the event oh yeah absolutely it, it definitely is hard work and um you know when you when you do reach a certain level the um you look at you look you approach practice sessions differently mm -hmm. and uh it, for me from the time i arrive at the circuit it's 100 percent tactical um i never want to give anything away i don't want to show my hand to to my competitors so from the first session that I go out, I have a very, very clear plan as to what I'm going to be doing in every session from the time, uh, from the first practice session to the last session in the day. And um, pacing myself, because that's uh, what I do in those practice sessions is going to be very indi indicative of, of what's going to happen from beginning, middle, end of the race. Um, the beginning of the race for me is vital, but not as vital as the the, the 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 second part of the, of the race from the halfway point to the end it's all about consistency and putting the perfect laps together and um you know trying to keep the maximum pace all the way to the end to the flag but, and, and, and you know in advance how many laps there are and you can you can strategize accordingly yeah we we, we do know how many laps there are in advance um this like once again strategy is is vital uh We've got a, it's, it's not just me strategizing out on track. It's, it's the team strategizing in pit lane, uh, trying to figure out what the perfect amount of fuel is, uh, you know, because the weight of the bike changes from the beginning of the race. You know, you start with a full tank, your brake markers change. Mm. Um, the, the agility of the bike changes. So it's, <laughs> it's a team effort. Everybody, you know, when most people look at, at, at motor racing and they say, yeah, it's an individual sport. It's not an individual sport at all. We've got a team of six to eight people standing on pit lane, uh, making sure that everything is running perfectly. But it's the same as, as, as any other code of sport. The coach is never, if you look, if you look if just uh, look at the World Cup, the coach is, is the oak that you see there, but there's so many other people behind him. There's a whole technical team that need to be part of this whole uh, plan and, 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 and strategy team to make the event work. Oh, absolutely. It, it's it's you know, like you say, you look at you look at the World Cup, you look at rugby, you look at any any other code of sport. Um, you can never look at something through one pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. You your eyes can only follow. Your your eyes are only looking at certain aspects. Um, the team effort comes in when, where 
certain people have certain skills. Um, so, you know, the coach overall has an idea of what he wants to see happen and, and how he wants things to play out. But he's got advisors that are looking at things from a completely different perspective. So, and exactly the same thing with the racing. You know, you look at Formula One, uh, you know, um, Vettel's team, you know, he's got his guys that are, that are looking out for his best interests. Lewis Hamilton's team has got his guys looking out for his best interests. Whether they're teammates or not, you know, um, they're analyzing things very, very differently. So it's, 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 such a, it's such a mind game, like every sport. Ab absolutely. So, so who, what would be your pit crew? Give us an idea of, of, of the magnitude of, of people that put this, that's, in your, that's in your corner on, on a race day or on a practice day. Well, aside from me, I've got my, I've got my, my uh, head uh, uh, race engineer, Eddie Henry. Um, he's actually just come over. Uh, he's, he's helping me with helping me this season. Uh, he was involved with the BMW World, World Superbike team for the last few years. He was in the development stages with that. Um, and he's actually flown over. He's come back to South Africa. He's my, my chief technician at the moment. So he looks after everything from the engine, strategizing. You know, he's my go-to guy. Mm. I speak to him first. And then he delegates to everybody else. I've got one guy who's who's in charge of, of tires. We've got another guy who's in charge of the, the chassis and suspension. So whatever feedback I give to a guy like like Eddie, we break that down, and we we accumulate all the data at basically pretty much at the end of every session. We break all that data down and, and we balance everything out. The tires, we know exactly how many laps we've done on a, a set of tires. We my feedback lets them know exactly where where we are at certain points from the time we're getting on the brakes to the time we let go of the brakes mm. to the time we get on the gas yeah. and different lean angles um, you know those things get fed in and and I can actually we can actually fine-tune every last aspect whether we want uh, electronic engine braking or not whether we want traction control or not um, those kinds of things we've got another guy who, who looks after the suspension so the suspension guy and the tire guy will, will definitely be speaking to each other and you know we know exactly where we are. Um, and Eddie will, will oversee everything. And once he's downloaded all the data from the motorcycle, we can actually see what my feedback is and, and compare the, the graphs of, of, of everything. It's, it is extremely, extremely technical. When, when you look, for, for anybody looking at uh, looking at the at the data sheets it's it's a whole lot of lines and ones and twos and numbers that's why it's important for kids to stay in school because you got <laughs> the, the amount of numbers you got to look at it's uh it's it's not as it's not as glamorous as as you think it is it's 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 a very very technical like once again technical sport um you have to have a certain amount of intelligence in this in this game yeah because it's not just about the feel on the bike it's about the feel off the bike oh, absolutely. you need to be in, in to, like you say to interpret all the data that you get. Absolutely. I mean, the natural talent comes in at a certain point, um, but you know, you can you you have to outthink your opponent. And if you and if you can't process information fast enough, you you you're going to be left on you're going to be caught on the back foot. And uh, it's it's you the, the biggest thing is outsmarting your opponent. And as you saw in the in the in the in the video, you you sussing guys out. You you everybody's going in the same direction. But you need to know how to place yourself on the on the track, where and when to make your move. Let's have a look at this clip and see what Lance is talking about about how to suss out your opponent. See you now. Just got off the line uh, from a race, from a previous race of mine from Port Elizabeth a few years ago. Um, my teammates Brent Herring and Clinton Seller are uh, in this race with me. As you can see, two riders have just pulled away off into the distance, we've caught up to them into turn one, Clinton Seller sliding up the inside, me around the outside. Um, circuit conditions are pretty damp, so uh, off from the get-go we're testing out the, the, the grip levels, just trying to see you know, how hard we can push it. Uh, through the sweep here, this is quite a, a risky sweep, it goes off camber here into a very tight hairpin, uh, second gear, very, very slow into here, got to get on the gas nice and early. Um, heading down into the dip towards uh, Chevy Sweep. This is w really one of my favorite tracks in South Africa. 
I've had a few, quite a few wins and lap records around this circuit. Um, as you can see, Clinton opting to, to run it out a little bit wide going into the last turn. Um, but uh, from my onboard shot, you can quite clearly see my mid-corner speed is, is much better. This is now heading down the main straight uh, into turn one. We've got a decent idea of what the grip level is like. Um, now it's all about me sizing Clinton up, seeing where he's weak, where he's strong. I'm pretty sure that uh, I'll be able to figure something out soon enough to, to put a pass in him, just catch him by surprise and uh, run away with the race. Clinton's a very, very strong competitor, very strong on under braking, uh, but this is one circuit where you've got to be so inch perfect, you know, placing the bike in, in the right place wherever you need. See, as you can see, I'm having a look up the inside because I know that I'm a little bit stronger under braking. My grip is, and setup is probably slightly better than, he is, than his is. Um, as we come through the dip into the sweep, you can see my mid-corner speed, as I mentioned before, is way, way better and uh, good enough to put the pass in him. And that's all she wrote. Welcome back, Lance. That was um, something else. I, I used to ride a Blackbird and uh, I've never done anything like that. Never got my knee that low down. Um, I don't know how you do it. But uh, when we come back, we'll find out how Lance has, uh, manages to get his lean angles that low. See you now. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox Synergy 2.2 kilogram whey protein for only 459.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 for only 179.95 or the Evox Creatine HCL now only 209.95. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westerberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego from only 999 per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration and number plates. Only at Tata Westerberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Welcome back. We're chatting to Lance Isaacs, the man, the legend, the motorbike king, as some people call him, Lance. Tell us a bit about these lean angles. How do you manage to get the bike so low? Yeah, well, it's <laughs> a lot of, uh, some, some of it's stupidity, but no, not at all. Um, you know, the, the, bikes, the bikes nowadays are, the designs and, and, and the, the way the bikes are, are, are built now are, you know, we can see incredible, incredible lean angles up to 60 odd, 65 degree sure. lean angles. You know, you see some guys like uh, Mark Marquez in the MotoGP, those guys are scraping their elbows and their butt cheeks on the, on the floor. Um, the tires that we use are, are very different to, to the tires that they use. Um, ours is a pretty much, anybody can go out and buy those tires off the, off from a motorcycle store. Um, and uh, yeah, it, you know, for us to get, in, if in order for us to get around the corners at the speeds that we do, we have to have those kinds of lean angles. Um, the bikes are sliding around all the time. We maximizing the grip levels, um, trying to feed on the, <laughs> the the power as early as possible. Sometimes we get it wrong. We run out of talent, so. Yeah. As they call it. Yeah, as but they call it. But no, 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 tell me, do you actually look at the speedo? I mean, at what speeds are you cornering? Oh, hell no. I don't want to be looking at the speedo. Does Definitely. the speedo work? First question. Yeah, it does work, but uh, the last thing I want to be doing is looking down at the speedo yep. because uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot more important things to be watching, watching out for. Yep. You know, I'm watching where where the next guy's going, um, plotting my move. Mm. You know, you've got to be so inch perfect when you're riding around the racetrack. It's you've got to connect the dots, and if you if you miss one dot, it's an opportunity for you for for the for your opponent to to slide on it, slide on by. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, generally going around a corner, you're doing it in third, 150k an hour. Just so viewers can get an idea of what kind of speed you're doing around. Yeah, a well, you know, depending depending on the racetrack, as we've seen in the in the insert, Port Elizabeth is not very not a very uh, fast uh, or, or long racetrack. 
um, down the main straight on the thousands we'll be doing possibly because it's such a short straight we'll be doing maximum speed of probably about 285 k's 290 k 90 k's an hour um, it's the straight definitely isn't long enough um, into turn one which is the third gear turn we've, we've, as you saw the in as you see in the insert three bang three gears back into turn one uh, third gear corner obviously sliding through there you get it you 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 are on the brake so late into the turn. Um, that turn we're probably doing 130, 120 k's an hour. Into the next turn, which is another very, very tight, uh, uh, twisty sh uh, turn, uh, the, the S's. Um, that's probably about 60, 80 k's an hour because we're slowing down quite a bit there. Mm. The next turn after that is a very, very fast left-hand sweep. There, through there, you're doing 160, 170 k's an hour, flicking it over to the right hand side probably just as just as fast down into second gear for a 60 kilometer hour, an hour corner but i mean uh, like you said earlier it, it's about finding that that right sweet spot where you can flick and and, and yeah. you can get the lean angles and know that putting it into second is going to give you enough yeah. give to get to the acceleration out of the corner absolutely we, we you know for, for us it's 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 as you can see it's absolutely physical and it's it's being one with the bike and the uh, and yourself um, maneuvering your body weight from this, from side to side, putting the bike in the right position, in the right gear. There's so much to think about. It's it's not just a physical sport; it's a mental sport as well. Talking about the physical aspect, wha what else do you do other than, than than motorbike riding? I mean, how else do you stay in trim? You heard about Schumacher going to gym, and unfortunately, he had that little crash. Yeah. But I mean, in a general sense, what do what do people like yourselves do other than? To, to just to sustain your your physical ability. Well, you know my my typical week is is uh, is a lot of gym training. Um, I try to ride uh, an off road bike as, as often as I can. Uh, oh, sorry, just uh, to bicycle or, moto or, or motorbike? Motorbike, off road motorcycle. Okay. Um, you know, just just to just to keep my my reflexes nice and sharp. Um, the the riding an off road bike, it, like I say, it, it you know learning to slide the bike uh, keeps keeps the, the, the core nice and strong as well do a bit of yoga you know the gym the, the gym training will it, it's good for for some of the strength training but there isn't really any any kind of gym training that you can do to simulate riding a bike so the fitness level with that kind of uh, fitness comes in is pretty much riding an off-road bike and actually going down to the to the racetrack and riding your actual yeah. super bike doing doing test sessions but you, would, you wouldn't consider riding for arguments like a mountain bike yeah, look, I, I cycle as well. Okay. Um, I've done the August a few times uh, with Mr. Morgan Newman. Uh, his 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 idea of the August is very different compared to mine. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit more competitive when it comes to two wheels. He, he goes out there to enjoy it. Enjoy I the scenery. I want to finish as quickly as yeah. possible. But yeah, it's um, we d I do some some road riding, uh, mountain bike riding a mountain bike. Um, not really. Um, it is it is a it is a really really decent uh, decent way to train but uh, you know with, with when you're riding a mountain bike it's, you just have to go you've got to put your your bike in the car drive out somewhere to go and ride your mountain bike whereas my road bike put my kids on at my front door and out they go yeah no I, I was just trying to trying to think because you you're riding off-road uh, motorbike yeah uh, and combining a bit of fitness and doing yeah. a mountain bike ride for argument's sake yeah look no look I mean uh, I I definitely love to cross train, um, running everything. You know, any I, I like to keep, um, I like to keep my my fitness regime very diverse. Uh, I don't want my body to get you too used to one thing in particular. So you know, I keep it interesting. And, and what was it like training overseas and racing overseas? I mean, a year at, year at home you can do anything and everything. Um, on the road when you were traveling internationally, what was it like? Training wise and my international stint was was definitely one of the highlights of my of my career um, from living in Italy um, and you know training with some of the best guys in the world some of the best motorcycle riders in the world meeting some of my heroes um, you know I learned an, an absolute I absolutely learned so much from from those guys and it's 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 actually put me in, in good stead uh, to date um, the traveling out there was extremely hectic. We had a lot more races. 
so the training in between wasn't as as frequent as as I can do I can the in between training right now, but um, we had more racing. So the you know we we got our we we got our kept our eye in with, the, with that pretty much. I mean, th how often did you race every weekend? We, jeez, we had some some crazy stints. Um, I was actually explaining to somebody a couple of days ago. We'd do some stints from I'd be I'd leave Cape Town, fly to Italy, um, being spend pretty much three four days in Italy, get on a plane, fly to Bangkok, Bangkok to Australia, Australia, Japan, Japan back to Europe, all in the space of a month. So. The traveling would definitely get to you, and it's and you, and you've got to stay fit in between. But we are riding, so um, it's taxing on the body, traveling-wise, and in the sport-wise. How many passports did you run at one time, my friend? Because <laughs> that's I'd, a I'd go through I'd go through at least two passports uh, a year. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Because you fly in, stamp, fly yeah, out, stamp. Absolutely. I mean, we we traveled all over the world: America, South America, Australia, Japan, all over Europe. Um, back to South Africa and you know it's a uh, passport control uh, the guys at passport passport control in certain countries uh, knew my face very well <laughs> <laughs> for, for the right reasons <laughs> for, the, for the right reasons absolutely <laughs> but Lance what was it like racing on on, on, on a our domestic circuit um, than our national circuit versus the national competition let's say in Italy we spent a fair amount of time but look um, our our national series in South Africa is absolutely right up there uh, we are extremely competitive, especially uh, recently we've seen two of our South African competitors finish on the podium on a world stage. Mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago we had uh, another Cape Town boy, David McFadden, um, finished uh, third, I think it was, in the um, World Superstock Championship that runs with the World Superbike Series. It's the feeder class into the world, the main uh, World Superbike Championship. Um, he, he got his first podium ever. Um, and just this past weekend, uh, the South Africa Joburg youngster Brad Binder uh, was got onto the podium for the first time. Was South African, last South African to actually climb on a Grand Prix podium was in 1976, um, uh, 1986. Sorry, uh, Mr. Rodemeyer. And um, Brad Binder to date was was the first South African since then to climb on a Moto3 Grand Prix podium. And we're looking for more, many more podiums from him. And you know these are youngsters. Th these are guys that I've I've ra well Brett Binder I haven't raced with. He's pretty he's pretty young. Um, David McFadden I've, I've raced against him. So you know you can see guys I've beat going over there. I've done it. I've I've been over there. Um, I've raced in America. I won an, uh, an American championship. So uh, you know our level of competition is absolutely right up there. We we can pr we have produced world champions in the past. And I think we can continue to produce world champions. Absolutely, and, and particularly with, uh, with with the academies that are run here at Kilani and at Kailami. Yeah. The Brad is an example of that's come through an academy. Yeah. Um, uh, absolutely. I mean, he, he he's you know his parents pretty much put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into into his his sport in the beginning, um, and uh, w he was fortunate enough to go to the Red Bull Rookie Cup uh, to compete in that, and he was fed straight into the into the Grand Prix scene. Um, I don't believe that there's enough going on uh, with with regards to to riding academies in South Africa. They, the, the sport definitely needs to needs a lot more recognition. Um, I was very fortunate when uh, when I uh, got got my break, um, was in the right place at the right time, and uh, got a deal signed. Um, it's a continue. It's a continuous fight. So we we definitely need to see um, the government actually putting some money into into the into motorsport uh, because we have had more world champions than in both world champions in the last 10 15 years than probably any other code of sport um, but nobody knows it no one's recognized it um, and everyone's out there going going on their own steam um, and you look at places like Italy and Spain um, they've actually they actually endorse their, their youngsters and, and feed them into they, they've actually got a, a, an endorsement so they they help the youngsters get to that world yeah. level, and once they've signed their big contract, they actually start paying the money back to the to the federation in order for new youngsters to actually feed. Because 
when they go, when they make it in the in the world stage. You know, they they earning six figure salaries. So you know, when w talk about giving back to the sport, the sport's given so much to you. You got to give back to the sport, and I, it'll be great to see our our government kind of kind of adopt such a a, um, a, a feeder mm -hmm. for for our youngsters. We got to look at diversifying. You know, we we such a diverse so many such a diverse culture. We need to look at you know uh, other codes of sport where we are where our youngsters can thrive. Absolutely, and and just the last thing, explain to us the difference between MotoGP and Superbike. Because people don't yeah. seem to quite understand what's the difference between MotoGP and, and, and Superbike. MotoGP is pretty much like Formula One. Everything is prototyped um, from the, the frame to the wheels to the brakes. Everything on, the, on that motorcycle is prototyped. No one, there's not any amount of money that you or I could buy, uh, can pay to buy anything that is on a MotoGP bike. Where World Superbike is very much production based. Everything that gets developed on the MotoGP bike eventually gets mass produced. So you and I can pretty much go and buy anything that the g likes of Marco Melandri or Tom Sykes or Jonathan Ray are, are riding on their on their superbike. Um, and the bike that I'm riding right now is a superbike as well. So my bike on that world stage could pretty much do exactly what they're doing. MotoGP, very very different kettle of fish. Um, it's eventually three four four years down the line filters down into the into the superbike category but you see the bikes are getting faster and faster the electronics are getting better and better and it's just making it's making right the, the electronics that the motor gp guys are testing will eventually filter down to superbikes and back onto the road for the guy that, who's riding on the street every day you see a lot of the street bikes you buy now have got electronics on them tested tried and tested motor gp world superbike and, 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 and that's where it's at, is, is, the, is the next level. Because, I mean, you and I can ride a bike and play all we want, but if we don't have the technology to help us for the times when we do run out of talent. Absolutely. When some o opens his door or, or does something silly. Absolutely. ABS braking. You know, the, the we're developing the ABS braking to an extent that it's, it's you can pretty much race with ABS braking nowadays. Sure. So it, it's, it's pretty much fail safe. So once again filters down to the man on the street he can he can have that sporty riding ability but be as safe as houses uh, on the road as well Lance we're going to come back to you for some closing comments let's have a look at the notice board let's see what's coming up in the next week or so and we'll say goodbye to Lance after the notice board let's have a look and see coming up in this coming week the 13th to the 19th of July we've got the Berg River Canoe Marathon happening and we, I'm sure the competitors are grateful for the amount of rain that's just fallen to help them with that. We've got the swimming uh, Western Province Aquatics ch uh, Senior Champs happening at the Strand Swimming Pool. We've got Varsity Football, which is, as we said before, getting almost as big as Varsity Rugby Cup. We've got uh, yachting happening in Hart Bay. We've got the Bodybuilding Championships happening on the 9th of August, Women's Day, at the Belleville Civic. And we've got cycling, uh, mountain bike happening coming up in August. There's lots more. Check out the Facebook page. If you have more information, send it to media at Sports Council. And we'll definitely upload it and share it. Lance, closing comments. What's next for Lance? Well, um, I've just been named uh, brand ambassador for BMW, South Af BMW Motorrad, South Africa. And, um, you know, we've got some exciting times ahead. Um, BMW is definitely... Uh, opening their hearts and their arms to, to new things. Uh, we've got, we're going to have some exciting events coming up. My sponsors, uh, uh, Black Swan Energy uh, and Shock Doctor SA. We've, we're definitely looking forward to finishing off our season on a high. We, we're a very new team this year. Um, and we've got, uh, we've got some big plans in the pipeline. Next year, it's going to be an even bigger and better year for us. Um, we, we're looking forward to winning the championship this year we're going to give it our all um, I was leading the international motor red cup this uh, the mid, uh, the, uh, this year um, we want to win that especially for South Africa it's an international cup so um, some big prize money up there so I'm looking forward to going on holiday at the end of the season lovely <laughs> uh, how do people follow you Facebook Twitter yeah you can follow me on on uh, Twitter uh, at Lancelot 38 my website Lancelot 38.com um, I've got a Facebook uh, fan page, uh, Lance Isaacs, um, well, Lance also slash Lancelot38. Uh, 
lots of upcoming news, doing lots of giveaways from uh, quite a few of my sponsors on there. So give us a follow and uh, we'll keep you up to date with what's going on. Perfect. Lance, thanks for your time. Thanks for making time to come and chat us about your life and how motor, motor racing has improved your life in many ways, I'm sure. Thank you for the opportunity. And I, I hope I've inspired some new youngsters to, to get out there and uh, come down to Kilani, have a look. Uh, you may catch me down there in Pit Lane. Don't be shy, come and speak to me. Guys, that's Lance. He's given you an open invitation. Follow him on Facebook, follow him on Twitter. Come see him in the pits. Be like Lance. Have an awesome weekend. Race hard. Train hard. Give your best. See you next week Friday, 9 p.m. Ciao, ciao.